yeah, first of all, I'd like to I'd like to have a look at today's agenda with you. Um, and uh, I mean, this topic of how to effectively trade through a losing streak is um, probably something which is one of the um, probably underrated topics. I mean, if you probably click through um, uh, social media, you, you never, never, ever um, uh, face a trader um, who is um, um, actively talking about losses but instead you see uh, a great um uh, great great um, um skylines you see uh, great cars lamborghinis and whatever um and uh lots tons of money um case of, of especially i mean this is this this probably sounds a little uh, um, um chauvinistic is it true or, or macho like let's say but um over 90 percent of the traders are um men and so uh those guys who present their wealth there and their success in trading they are surrounded by beautiful women um and uh, not many really discuss uh losing in trading and especially um even less than uh and that are discussing um, how to cope with losing streaks. And I can uh, tell you from personal experiences, especially over the last 12, 18 months, um, I, I'm currently working my way out of a drawdown, which is, on the other hand, completely natural. And um, I'm very, very thankful for uh, knowing what to do. And uh, this is the thing. If I'm sitting here talking to people and, um, and um, explain to them how the markets work and then what to look for and everything they are most of the time uh thinking okay this guy there um it must be that that he is um uh successful and and there's uh no losing in his trading which is definitely not true and not only that but um over time i started to think about the people sitting in front of the screens listening to what i have to say and um when i face a losing streak and i start to struggle start to wonder whether um the strategy still um works for example all the skepticism arising then um i i wondered after some time um after years let's say um i wondered okay what has it to feel like for someone sitting in front of the screen, not having all the experience I have, not really knowing what what he's he she is doing, uh, not knowing whether the strategy works? What must it feel like? It must feel like um, completely devastating, r sitting um, um, on the back of a horse, let's say, which is completely out of control and um, um, and 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 sh shaking you around. And I think this is a fair way to put it, and uh, that's one of the main motivations here behind this webinar in fact and yeah so today's agenda we'll go through um these um steps here how losses are expected part an expected part of a strategy um probably some of you recall that um we had a webinar called monte carlo simulations um one week ago two weeks ago no last week it was the fx um sentiment based trading strategy two weeks ago um and uh, there we we um, could see uh, that thanks to these simulations, even though there's this is just simulations, you can see based on input parameters, especially around the hit rate, how likely it is that you, for example, face 10 losses in a row and more than that, probably 15 losses in a row. And uh, so they are to some extent expected parts of this. And um, yeah, then we want to look at the three pillars here for keeping cool in such a losing streak, which is mathematically um, completely normal and you can't avoid it. You you have no chance to avoid these losing streaks. And we have some per per perfect examples currently, for example, in our uh, traders um, uh, trading spotlight, traders yard community. We will um, also have a look here. It's today, for example, there was another losing, losing trade after we had already several losses over the last days. We are still ahead, nevertheless, feeling uh, it, it fe doesn't feel very comfortable right now facing one losing trade after the other so we have realistic real um trading examples available here where uh, probably some of you who are already following us there um probably um trading these strategies we present there that these people um probably start to wonder do these strategies really work hmm. shall i skip the strategy probably wait for for someone else to come up with with something and um so you probably have already real market examples thanks to our um, a trading spot a traders yard community so then how to incorporate a constructive uh, criticism into your trading 
one very, very important aspect. Um, so criticism is one thing, but constructive criticism is another thing. So I uh, refer to this usually as well, we could call it inducing rationality. So really knowing what your strategy is based on and not only that, but also which key parameters are um, um, the fundament of the strategy. And based on that, inducing rationality and criticism into your trading and then adaptations you can make to your trading to get out of the streak, especially from a mental perspective. And then also how to build this mental stability for all trading environments. This is um, what we want to look at today. Uh, before we start, this is me again. Um, so if you want to have infos, I uh, recommend, especially when you watch the recording of this webinar right now, to probably check the uh, box here below this video um, or probably check this chat box right now uh, with an interview I did together with Admiral Marcus so that you have an idea where I come from, but this shouldn't be the main part here. Um, if we want to talk about anyone here, um, then it should be definitely up in the markets for making all this possible. And uh, um, what I not mentioned at the beginning of this webinar is that I'm located in Berlin, in Germany, and um, Atma Markets has an office here in uh, Berlin, in Germany. And um, so I, I am, yeah, so, I, so I, in a, I'm in a very comfortable spot. So if um, in my trading, something does not work, or not necessarily in the trading part, but um, if I want to talk to my broker in person, um, meet with them, uh, you have a place where you can go. The office is there and there are real people behind the scenes. It's not only a voice you probably hear somewhere uh, via the phone or something. So this is the very first important aspect um, uh, you should look after when looking for a broker, but not only that. So um, at my markets here in Germany, for example, is referred to as the so-called DAX expert. So they can see it already uh, besides being licensed by several regulatory bodies like the FCA, for example, uh, like the SISEC, like the ASIC in Australia, and also um, not only having several offices around the globe, several means 20 plus, with uh, having you a very high chance to reach out if you reach out to the service desk from Admiral to have someone in your native language, but also offering as a true multi-asset broker over 8,000 financial instruments. No, come back to the DAX. Um, very competitive spreads. Uh, this is what we refer to as, as uh, the DAX expert here. So when talking about Admiral Markets, you have um, a very, very, very good broker, especially when it comes to trading the DAX. It's also true for other um, assets, but in Germany, main traded asset is the DAX. And um, here you can see it's uh, 0.8 points during the main trading hours for DAX 30. In my case, um, in my trading account, for example, I'm trading um, via the so-called prime solution. Um, here I have a, um, a 0.2 spread for the DAX and pay a commission on top of that. So as you're probably used to when trading um, MFX, probably, for example, also in the prime solution then. So definitely worth to give it a try, give it a look, um, um, reach out to admiralmarkets.com. Right now they have um, also a very interesting, um, I, I think it's a, it's an anticipation already of, of Black Friday with a reduction of um, the spreads and, and uh, that's called the rebate solution. So you pay a spread and then you're getting um, paid for the activity till within a certain time period here. And you can um, um, save some money here on the spread too, which is in fact also very underrated, probably worth the topic then in the future um, um, in regards to the costs which are here connected to this. And so now let's have a look at today's topic. Let's have a look here at the introduction. And um, here, I want to start with an example we had um, two weeks ago within our uh, Monte Carlo simulations webinar here, in our recent webinar. And um, what, would the, what, what, what did we do here? Uh, we ran a simulation on our SP500 CFD open range breakout um, strategy with a, in our case here, 47% um, hit rate. So that was um, over 1,000 trades, and there, um, within our Monte Carlo simulations, we, sh um, we, we, we could see that we had streaks of 15 losing trades in a row. And it was easily to achieve those 15 losing trades. And now the thing is, while such losing streaks, um, uh, or such a losing streak in this case, is mathematically, as I already mentioned it, completely normal, it's nevertheless tremendously difficult to stay rational during such a streak. I think after, several webinars now within this series. Some of you may have um, uh, um, um, seen former um, um, Trading Spotlight webinars and that we um, here had also a focus, not only me, but also Marcus and also Paul who are running um, um, also here Trading Spotlight webinars. Um, we had a, a very, very important um, and, and 
always focus on the mental side. And the reason for that is because mental the mental side of trading is uh, very, very important. It's not, in my case, I, I firmly believe it's not done by being mentally stable. So um, even if you're now in a position that you say, okay, I'm, I, I can cope with losing streaks, for example, I am, I'm very, I'm still comfortable in trading, even though it's probably not feeling really good then, but still I'm fine trading the strategy. Um, at the end of the day, Mentally stable, being mentally stable doesn't necessarily mean that you're profitable in your trading. If you don't have a, a trading um, 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 strategy, which is not proven profitable and has a positive expected value, well, you can be as mental stable as you want. You, at the end of the day, or at the end of a certain period, you will uh, definitely lose the, you lose your account. And uh, it's not a question of as, um, um, if you lose the account, but only when. You can be, again, as mental, mentally stable as you want. Um, still, the mental side is something which is very, very important. And uh, this is something we want to look at here then today. So we have here two screenshots. Oh, I'm sorry. So. Um, what we can do, and these two um, um, uh, charts, you probably um, rem remember them, um, it's from my book website. So now you will say, oh, great, a book. I can, I can buy a book. Yes, but it's an English webinar, so it's probably not very useful for you to read a German book. Um, and I, I told the story behind this uh, Monte Carlo simulator. I um, am created here on the website for the book, and um, those screenshots are from this website. So just that you know um, where to find it. I'm not sure. Let me just have a look here. Okay, no. Well, I, I did say if you if you want further details on this, check the uh, box below the video then. So it's trader-dasbuch.de, but I won't share the link here. Right now, we, we want to, to, to look at these um, examples in the first place here. So um, when using these, um, uh, this, this simulator here, we can enter our known key parameters of the strategy. In this case, the SP500 open range breakout, the SP500 CFD open range breakout. We have a hit rate, we know that, over 1,300 trades. We remember that, 47%, and we have a payoff ratio of 1.3121. And when we put those numbers into the simulator here, you can see it, um, and we simulate 1,000 trades here, um, we see 15 different equity curves being generated. These are these here, these are the equity curves. Um, and we run this with a 1% risk per trade, in fact. And then below that, um, those, those equity curves, those simu simulated equity curves, we get certain output parameters. So like Kelly, for example, you probably recall also one webinar within our trading spotlight series, there we had the chance to focus on the optimal growth of our equity curve, for example. And with these parameters, Kelly says risk 7% per, um, uh, 7 per per trade, risk per trade you can take here um, by not facing uh, the risk of, of, of going broke, in fact, and, and having the optimal growth without looking at potential drawdowns. This is something very, very important, and that's only a theoretical number if you want. Um, but, and what's, what's more interesting here is, in fact, this. Let me just try something. I'm not sure, uh, I, I've never done this before, but let me just, let me just try if, if I can, if it, if it works. Oh, no, this doesn't work. One second. Let me just see. Huh. I shouldn't have clicked here. <laughs> that wasn't good. Um, okay, there we go. So here, this is what we look at. So here I'm back again now. I, I hope you can see it. So I, I won't change the, uh, the color now. I, I prefer red, but let's go with gray. So this is the number we'll look at here. Um, it reads in German, maximal folgende Verlierer. Maximal folgende Verlierer means nothing more than a max number of consecutive um, um, losing trades. So how many losing trades in a row are generated? And it's only, I mean, I, you can run several simulations here. I can guarantee you, if you run the simulation often enough, you can easily get numbers of over 20 here. So it, which means you're losing 20 trades in a row. Um, now, you know that the strategy is proven profitable, but believe me, after running this here, let's say, or after trading the strategy, let's say for five times or something, um, you'll definitely face 
the sixth trade and say, well, you know what? I skipped the trade. I don't trust the strategy anymore. And the funny thing is that most of the time, and this is something you probably also have had in your trading, that the sixth trade then is capable of making back, back most of the, if not all of the losses which happened. So I can tell you something from personal experience here that was during, let me just think about it a little. So we have now November, October was a very good month for the strategy, one of the strategies I trade. Um, and then I had October, September and then and, and August. So this, this um, um, period. So I went down with my, um, um, with one of my strategies here, uh, which, which I trade with a risk of 0.6 per trade I take there. I went down to something like minus 10%. I don't have the clear numbers, clean numbers now, but um, just to, to illustrate how this works. So um, now the thing is, you're down nearly 10% in two months. And I can tell you there were serious when I just thought this is not this is not possible. So if I show you the um, equity curve and the, the result here of this real example, um, I can tell you, you would look at it and then just think, okay, that was a very bad period. And, and this is really bad because um, I'm, I'm used to losses in the range of, let's say, 10%. But if the losses of two months, um, which add up to 10%, minus 10%, um, all these losses come during a, um, um, a time period of, of uh, for um, uh, two weeks because you were trading quite stable. So the strategy was performing well, performing bad. It was like break even trading. And then you had two weeks and it just went into one stop loss after the other. It was just like stopped out, stopped out, stopped out, stopped out. Um, and I looked at this and I started counting the losses and it was just like, hmm. I went up to 20 losses in a row. Okay. So you, now you can imagine it's easily achievable to get to minus 10% here. Um, and the, the thing now was that I was like, okay, I'm, I can still cope with that because the risk I was taking on the trades also in absolute euro terms was completely fine. I'm, I'm not mentioning any numbers here, but believe me, I, I was fine with that. Still, from a mental perspective, I was just shaking my head and just thinking, hmm, well, what to do with this strategy? And now the funny thing was that I kept on trading it because I know about all this and, and how to cope with mental stability and or mental instability. And when you become kind of emotional, let's say, it's not that I'm completely going berserk, but it's like, it's painful, right? It's painful. And it's also an ego question. Um, and uh, so at the end of the day, you just swallow your pride. You just say, okay, and you know what? Keep on trading it. And now, you know what's the funny thing? The funny thing is, I kept on trading and within, no joke, within the first two weeks of the month of October, I met back all those losses without increasing my risk. So I kept on trading the strategy. I, I, I also, by the way, I could hold um, the, the risk stable at, um, in this case, 0.6% because the max drawdown I'm willing to take here is 25%. So I was well below that number with minus 10%. And within two weeks, I was capable of making back most of those um, um, losses, in fact. And all, right now, by the way, um, it's not only that I, 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 um, I made back the losses, but I made new equity highs during that period. And this is a perfect example of how to, where mental stability comes into play. Play. Most of the people who, especially those who say, hey, please show me the strategy. I believe you, you won't profit from that. And the reason for that is not because you're not capable of understanding how the strategy works. It's a, in fact, very simple strategy. But I can tell you from a mental perspective, after facing 10. It doesn't even need 20, but after 10 trades, you will definitely stop trading the strategy because why should you keep on trading a strategy which generates one loss after the other? I answer that question from a pure rational basis or um, um, perspective. And I say, well, the reason for that is because it's mathematically normal. And the only thing is that my brain and my, my mind, my ego starts to play games with me here. But at the end of the day, um, it's nothing personal. And this is what those simulations here can perfectly illustrate you. And you can see this already here. Still, that doesn't necessarily mean that you keep on trading can easily keep on trading the strategy. And um, so this is what we here want to right now look at. In fact, oh, this is, this is a little unfortunate. Let me just, by the way, I have to see if I can, can I? I want to delete this. Perfect. Okay, great. So, um, unfortunately, you know those those um, um, uh, pillars here not 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 flying into the, the um, um, 
presentation as, as it's probably better, but I think you can see where, where we are going after here. So there's no such thing as a blueprint. This is very important to understand. So I give you an idea of how to induce rationality and how to cope with such a losing streak. But at the end of the day, it's something very, very individual. So many people think that um, profitability in trading is something um, someone can teach you based on his personal experience. Well, in my case, for example, if I have a mentee and he comes to a student and he comes to me and wants me to teach him trading, I, one of the first things I tell him is you have to know yourself really, really well. Ask yourself, who am I? And if you can answer the question uh, or if you're not really... Um, if you don't really know whether this is really you you're describing there, um, ask someone who's very close to you, your wife or your husband, um, ask a very good friend, whoever you talk to on a, on a regular basis who really knows you well. Um, and, and then based on that, we can probably formulate such a plan for you um, you can follow, which is completely individualized to your personality, in fact. And so this is what I mean with there's no such thing as a blueprint. So I give you um, uh, some, some guidelines you can follow, but still you have to fill in it based on your, on your individuality, on your personal uh, character traits and all this. So if you follow these three, three, I'm sorry, three steps, I'm, uh, I'm very sure that, that you can definitely profit from it. That's one thing I, I will guarantee in this, at this case. So there's these three things are construct, constructive criticism, adaptability in your trading, and then mental stability. And what we want to do now is we want to go through all these three um, steps. Start here with constructive criticism. So there's a very simple question. Uh, you, can, you can ask yourself and from which everything starts. Do you, respectively, did you follow your own set of rules or our proven profitable trading strategy? Why, why do I say our? Because I'm looking here at the SP500 CFD open range breakout, okay? So did you follow the rules? The rules are very simple. We, we had a web webinar on this. We won't go through, through uh, these, these uh, rules right now, but in our case, it's four steps. Oh, by the way, let me just, probably that's also something which is, which is really cool. One, one second, let me just see. So we have our trading spotlight community here. Um, and now I, you can see already there are several posts from me, not only me, by the way, there's also Marcus and Paul who are, who are here posting their, their input. But we want to do the following. Let me just have a look here at Admiral Markets. Let's go on the website, admiralmarkets.com. And there, let's have a look here at the analytics tab. And there below traders block, you can, find an article and I will, by the way, um, post this in the chat box. Let me just see, where do I have the chat box? So there's the chat. Perfect, so, um, and we call this SP500 CFD, oh no, one second here, SP500 CFD ORB. So, and then we scroll down a little. You can also see here, for example, another strategy was on a Fed rate decision. So you, feel, you, you find plenty of input there. Weekly article, so weekly, um, um, a weekly article covering all um, assets, five assets in this case, DAX, USD, Euro, JPY, gold. Um, but also, it's not really a seasonal strategy, in fact, but it's the open range breakout. And let me just probably take out here this one. So, and there we have the rules of this strategy, okay? So there's the link. You can just read through this article and there you have those three steps we follow. Define the open range, we identify the advantage, and then we trade the break in direction of the identified advantage, place our stop accordingly, and take the profit accordingly to the preset rules. So the question is, do you follow these rules? This is what we want to come back at here or look, look at here again. So do you follow the rules? So you follow the rules, the trade generates a loss. Did you follow the rules? Answer is yes. Don't blame yourself. It's part of the game. Not every trade can be a winner and losing streets are mathematically completely fine. They are variance or bad luck. That's what you should tell you. And this is kind of a, let's call it mantra. You, can, you, can, um, you, you have to formulate for yourself, which is already a very good one in this case. Or you could also say something like losses are not only part of the game, but losses are the price for the next chance. 
you can take with this strategy. Just imagine you're trading um, with a risk which is not adequate based on the uh, risk parameters, based on the uh, account size you have, and you face a loss where you're not taking the loss, but you let the loss get out of control. And it com completely gets out of control in a way that it crushes your account. There will be no further chance. First thing is preserve your, your capital. So make sure that you still have money in the account left so that you keep, can keep on trading the strategy and capitalize the known positive expectancy of the strategy. Okay, so you can, you can not only see it as a losing trade, as um, something which is completely normal from a mathematical standpoint, but also as the price for the next chance um, you will have then the next day with this strategy, for example. If the answer to this question, did you follow the rules, is no, well, then you shouldn't look for excuses. Some of the people or some traders over the years during, or with, with my experience, I became aware of that, um, are blaming others for their losses. Like, well, did you see that? The market spiked lower just because Jay Powell said this and that, or Donald Trump tweeted this and that, or um, my cat went over the um, laptop and the trade was opened before I was um, 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 looking at the screen or it was taken out at the wrong place or it was entered, whatever. So there's always someone else you can blame for the losing trade. The thing about this is this is something which is not in our control. We, if, if we don't take responsibility here for the losing trade, for what just happened, um, we are a victim. Right? We are a victim and, and we, we won't overcome this because we have no chance to overcome this because it's always someone else. Um, and this is the thing. Just do it in a very simple, straightforward way. And this is probably also one of the key reasons or key um, um, differences between a profitable professional trader and a not profitable, unprofitable trader. Um, the profitable one, the profitable trader does not look for excuses. He just says, okay, yes, I made a mistake and this is fine. I'm human, humans make mistakes. And now, well, what I do is I realize the mistake, I analyze what, what went wrong, why did I take the risk? I address it, I move on and make it back better next time. If you make the mistake again next time, well, then the question is, why did you do that? You did the same mistake again, even though you realized it in uh, the first time and you addressed it and uh, you found ways, you formulated clear, clean ways how to overcome this, you did the same mistake again. Why? Like over -lever leveraging the account, for example, or not taking the trading signal, whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, this question also is um, already um, based on the fact that you realized you made a mistake. You made a mistake, which is already a first step in the right direction here. So it all comes down, constructive criticism, to a simple question. Did I follow my rules? Didn't I follow the rules? If yes, if I followed the rules, everything's fine. It's variance, it's bad luck. If this happens over and over again, um, well, then at the end of the day, we have to, to, to see, okay, um, probably the, the strategy is not working well, corresponding well with the market conditions anymore. Um, if I made a mistake, I have to address it. And I have to overcome this and make sure that next time this mistake doesn't happen anymore. So now the adaptations in your trading. Uh, this is already something I mentioned um, several seconds ago. The question is, which strategy um, are you trading? So, or did the market conditions change in this case? So in this case, it's obviously important to know the favorable market conditions for your strategy. Um, let's put this in a, um, uh, in, a, in a simple context, probably. Let's assume, I, I do this based on my strategies or my favorite, favorite strategies. I uh, consider myself um, a breakout trader. So I know that I'm performing well with these strategies because my personality also corresponds well with breakouts. Like I grind, I know that I, I, I'm, I'm a person who, who likes to grind. I, it's not that I like the pain connected with that um, or that I'm kind of, let's say, a masochist or something, but um, I, I grind, I'm, I'm kind of that. And I know once the breakthrough happens, I take on momentum and I never, look, I, or I never look back again. And this is very similar to trading breakouts and why I work correspond really well with this. So in my case, breakout strategies are 
crucial part of my trading, of my bread and butter uh, trading, let's say. Um, and uh, so now the question is, I can easily, because I know that I'm a breakout trader, and I know that I need a certain level of volatility, for example, in my trading, and I need um, trending structure, a trending market structure um, after the breakout occurred then. Um, if there is no volatility, if the market is very choppy um, so, and, and, and it's neutral and it's, it's this range bound, then you have plenty of fake outs potentially on the ups and downside and then losing streaks keep on um, um, yeah, summing up, let's say. So we're losing trades, keep on summing up. And um, so what, what I want to say with that is I already know when does my strategy perform well, when does it not perform well. So here it's important to understand that not all strategies, trading systems perform equally well under all conditions. Okay, breakout strategies perform really bad in range bound under range bound market conditions, as does um, range bound um, or or let's call range based strategies, trading strategies, which try to, to buy um, fake outs on the downside or fake outs, sell fake outs on the upside and see a bounce back into the range, while these strategies work horribly during trending conditions, because, especially if you do not work with a, with, a, with a stop loss here, because then loss aversion starts to become a big problem here. And um, so if you realize, or if you know what you're trading and you realize that the strategy is not corresponding really well with, your, with the market conditions anymore, take a step back and if possible, change certain parameters, if possible. Um, alternatively, you could also reduce the position size because now the thing is, um, some people always say, well, if a strategy is not working well um, under live conditions, I switch over to the demo account and trade still um, until the moment arrives when the strategy performs well again. The only problem is you can't forecast this. You don't know when the market will change. And I said this already at the beginning. Um, this is the same, it's the same idea behind um, um, skipping the strategy after you had five losing trades and then um, see this five losing days and five losing trades and the sixth day the strategy performs well again and makes back most of these losses respectively probably already turns a profit with only one trade because you're capable and your strategy and your rules are based on the thinking that you let winning trades run so the thing is you just don't know that but what you can do and this is also very important from a mental perspective some mathematicians i talk to um it's like um they they said well it's not really you're not really capable of, of um, 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 let's call it cheating on the strategy or cheating on the market or cheating on statistics. Um, I'm very skeptical. I, this is the thing. This is also something I, I refer to during the Monte Carlo simulation. I mean, the thing is that I, I said, well, what's something, what's, what is not considered here when running such static simulations is that you evolve as a trader, as you evolve as a human being. Sometimes um, you, 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 you make an experience, whatever it might be, and next time you will completely cope with the situation in a different way. This is also true for trading. If you evolve, you will see that rather sooner than later, um, it's not that you will reach this point of your personal point of ruin when you say I have a max drawdown of let's say 25% in my trading it's very, it will be very very difficult to, to reach that point even if it's possible from a mathematical perspective but you evolve and if you realize that the market is changing and that the strategy is changing or not corresponding well with the changing market environment anymore well you adopt and uh, you adapt and, and you probably reduce the position size which makes it impossible that you will re or unlikely more unlikely, let's say, unlikelier, that you reach this, this, this personal point of ruin. That will, at the end of the uh, month, year, career as a trader, probably cost you some, uh, um, um, some, some points, respectively, some uh, performance, but it will um, help you to keep on performing well from a mental perspective and um, stay stable, and especially. And this is something which I'd like to, to introduce you, or which I'd like to emphasize, which works also very well for me. Um, I can keep on trading the strategy since I, I'm, I'm uh, not not um, ego driven anymore in my trading. So to me, it's uh, the process which is important. It's not the performance. And the funny thing is that if you start to think of um, your trading as a process oriented um, 
thing, or you look at it more from a philosophical perspective. You formulate clear non-monetary goals. You say, I, I trade because of the, let's say, um, intellectual challenge. Um, then it becomes really easy to uh, also adapt accordingly to changing market conditions, reduce the position size, because you say, I love the game because of the intellectual challenge. Money is just a byproduct, which you make by the fact that you keep on trading with a positive exp expectancy and, and you evolve. Um, but I have to stay in this game and then risk comes first and, and, and you start to reduce the position size and adapt accordingly to the changing market conditions. So, and then there's the third aspect, mental stability. So, um, here, this is already something you can see that it's not um, um, you, you master one um, and pillar here and, and, and then you're done, but it's like they uh, correspond with each other, as do, for example, the three columns of, of profitable trading. Um, and uh, I already mentioned this, in fact, um, um, here during, during the last minutes. <clears throat> the question, who are you, is crucial to the overall long-term success in your trading, in fact. Um, it's like you also ask a question like, do you become emotional in your trading? The, the thing is, um, if, if you answer this question with yes, um, there's, there, there are people out there who say, oh my gosh, you will definitely fail in trading because you're emotional. Um, well, what we already know is emotions are crucial and it's completely unrealistic to believe that um, professional, profitable traders are not emotional in their trading, even though you probably can't see it within their trading results. But believe me, um, even though I know that losses are part of the trading game, I'm sometimes really, I, it's not, again, it's not that I'm going berserk, but sometimes it really hurts. And it, it's really like you just shaking your hat and just think, why, why I, why, why, why do I deserve this, this result? Isn't it possible to probably just push here a little more and reach my take profit and everyone is happy or why did you here stop me out with let's say two points or something and then turn around um this is all emotions in your trading it's completely normal um but the thing is what's more important is not that you become completely unemotional in your trading again it's not realistic and in fact you need emotions to perform well in your trading but uh, you need to know your emotions. You need to know what drives you. Why, when do you become emotional in your trading? And um, so, in fact, uh, if you realize that you become emotional negatively affected uh, or, or the emotions affect negatively your trading, well, then the first idea, first step, simple one is, again, reduce your risk and regain confidence in yourself and your trading first and then start to increase the risk again. Um, and it's, again, it's important to know yourself well. It becomes clear why self-confidence is such an important aspect among professional profitable traders. It's a very important one. You probably remember the 10 um, um, character traits of profitable traders, and there was self-confidence was one thing. But self-confidence is not, it's, it's not equal to ego. Okay, there's a big difference. An ego trader thinks that um, he is the one and uh, the only one and will, like, like, let's put it that way. He's the Donald Trump among traders, right? So like he's the greatest. Um, but this is the thing, um, self-confidence in this context is uh, to realize when you're wrong, when you did a mistake and then cope with it. This is where, where long-term profitability and consistency in your trading comes from because ego trading will rather sooner relate uh, rather sooner later result probably in something like revenge trading um personalized losses and start to 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 um try to make it back no matter what while self-confidence realizes okay i had a loss i did a mistake here I can deal with the mistake because I know my strengths and I know my weaknesses. And then you address, especially their weaknesses. You, you try to regain confidence. And this is something you do by reducing your risk, which, is, which aims, first of all, at um, um, a, simple, um, a simple idea. You try to stay in the game. Right. This is what what it's after. What what um, um this reducing and risk is after. So you you really try to reduce your risk in your trading, and by reducing the risk, you increase the um chances of 
regaining confidence, staying long enough in the game that once your strategy corresponds well with the market again, and you are performing well, especially from a mental perspective again, you can then start to capitalize on your positive expected value again. Um, and this is something, again, which is, which is uh, yeah, which is, probably one of the key differences between professional profitable trades, especially those with self-confidence and the unprofitable ones, which uh, mix up self-confidence with ego or which are most of the time ego traders. And um, then it's unbelievably important to have something completely different than trading, um, which is also something which is, uh, yeah, difficult, difficult to say. Um, uh, or, um, uh, some people I, I, I remember over the years uh, is that um, some people are um, very like, how can I say? Um, they, 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 when, once they start trading, this is everything to them. And the thing is that uh, this is really, um, uh, from a mental perspective, something which is really um, um, very difficult because then your success in life depends on your success in trading, which is a long-term path you follow. Um, and uh, this is something what, what I mean, mean with, with you have to know yourself and you have to um, um, know yourself really well. You have to know what works for you to regain not only confidence, but also um, get back to power, let's say, and, and, and um, um, how to rest well so that you can start performing well the next day again. So to some, it's going out, meet friends. To some, it's going to the gym. Uh, some say, I have to relax with my family. Some say, I have to have some part of everything here. Um, but what's all this, again, this is very, very uh, individual. Um, there must be something, this is my personal belief, I strongly firmly believe that, that there must be something which allows you to get your mind completely off your trading and which makes it possible not to think about the markets anymore. Um, and uh, so this is what mental stability then is about, this, this, this pillar. So let's sum all this up. Losing streaks in trading are completely normal, but only if you know what you expect from your strategy, but also from yourself from a mental perspective, staying cool, rational, and maneuvering your trading account without prejudice to significant losses becomes possible, okay? Then there's three effective steps you can go through here, which are constructively criticize yourself, did you follow your rules? This is the simple question you're looking after here. Then make necessary adaptations. Does your trading strategy and the market conditions currently correspond well with each other? And then the last thing is mental stability. Know yourself well. Um, and this is especially true, something we already mentioned here, the zone. Do you currently perform out of your zone? This is um, what it comes down to. So this is the, the um, highest point of the so-called jerks Dotson um, 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 curve here. And um, so I have to hurry up now a little. Don't forget to join us next time. And the funny thing is this time it will be me who's the next one to speak here. It's Monday. Um, and uh, there we will do something more technical, but something which is really interesting. We'll combine technical analysis with market data. So I also refer to market data as fundamental analysis. And then we try to find ways if or we try to answer the question, let's say, if it's somehow possible to at least get a better idea, somehow forecast the direction of the market. And we'll here look at um, not only technical analysis, but also what are the benefits of using your technical knowledge, technical analytical knowledge here um, to combine this with market data and then in which market this approach works the most effective um, or can be um, 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 adopted or can be used most effectively. And then trading strategies, we want to present here also combining the approach technical analysis with market data. Monday, 4th of November, 2 p.m. London time. Um, check your inbox for the webinar link. And uh, if you watch this on YouTube, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. I hope I get your thumb up. Probably you want to give a thumb down, but I hope for the thumb up. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat box below. Go to the Traders Yacht community also, ask your questions there. Um, for more analysis, education, go to admiralmarkets.com. Um, here are the contact details. If you now say, hey, Admiral Markets is cool. Um, I'm not yet um, uh, trading with them, but I'd like to start, especially when it comes to DAX. 
feel free uh, to, to reach out to Admiral and regulated um, uh, brokers have to show here the risk disclaimer at the end. This is what I do here. And um, I look forward to Monday. I, I hope you enjoyed the webinar. All the best. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself first and then talk to you again um, on Monday. I look forward to it. See you and bye-bye.